Didn't they just recently say that that's not happening? I'm pretty sure they just very recently said that that was a mistake and that they are actually putting LFD into it. Just make sure. I have another video that I just saw pop up. The problem with Blizzard Entertainment is they really struggle to make a good game anymore. Don't you guys think? Overwatch 2 is just a copy paste of the original game. Diablo Immortal was a complete dumpster fire with its microtransactions allowing you to quite literally pay to win the game. World of Warcraft has been a joke for some time now, and overall the mood in the community is that Blizzard has just completely lost their touch. And if nothing else, they certainly have lost their touch with connecting with their audience. You guys, mm -hmm. me, and all of us. Now many of you sitting here are probably ready to comment, or have already left a comment, that WoW is a dead game. Move on, it's over. But I wouldn't say that just yet. In fact, I hate when people say it's a dead game because it is so far from actually being a dead game. Even with its current player base, it's sitting uh, anywhere from one to two million players. That is still more than most other MMOs that is still running. So it is most definitely nowhere near dead just yet. There, there's still a lot of work that can be done there. I would say that we who remain, those of us holding on to the last shreds of hope, are perhaps on the precipice of World of Warcraft's final stand. But before we get into this video and what the possible future and the end of this game is going to look like, we have to thank today's sponsor. This video was sponsored by Bloodline, Heroes of Lithis. Are you ready for a new strategic card-based mobile RPG game set within a rich fantasy universe of orcs, elves, lichens, and demons? Then my friends, this game may just be for you. If oh, you yeah, are ready, yeah. click the link down I below in the description card and prepare games. yourself. Because I'm also a huge fan of Bloodline, mobile games. Heroes of like, Lithis, featuring beautiful it's 3D got all, graphics, it's got all the bells and whistles for me, bro. fast-paced combat, easy to use controls and a unique air system collect a large oh, yeah. variety this is what of i want to do as you play the game make them more powerful over time and then marry some of them together combining their traits and skills through bloodlines legacy system to create new champions ready to be raised and prepared for the fires of I thought this is a card world. game and with your roster of champions now in hand embark on this grand adventure to become the leader of the city of light the high guardian in the world of Lithos. how is this a card this game? game has just been released Looks, to the public, oh there's so cards like that you put out, and then again, they fight click the link down below so this is like great shadow legends the basically code on your screen right now and if you decide to delve into the adventures of bloodline dude what's interesting to me about every single one of these mobile card games the girls in these games are just like built to to circumvent teenage boys analytical brains what teenage boy sees this image right and thinks to himself oh maybe this is a cash grab <laughs> no teenage boy sits here and goes uh well this could be a cash grab they're like dude booba let's go delve into the adventures of bloodline why not use my promo code bldhol1 to get you started with a champion token, 100,000 gold, and 100 free diamonds. Whether you're a fan of collecting heroes, legacy systems and video games, action-packed combat, or just managing your own population in a fantasy universe, Bloodline Heroes of Lithis has much to offer to anybody who is ready to check out a new and epic mobile adventure. I remember being a young Nixium, laying in bed many days, thinking about what the end of World of Warcraft might look like. I loved WoW, the universe, the lore, raiding with my friends, role-playing, doing PvP, all of it. The game just felt so perfect with its community, full of inside jokes, caring developers, and future expansions to always look forward to. I remember wondering how it would all end. Would I move on and just grow bored of Azeroth, or would the game ultimately reach its end on its own? And if so, how? I always assumed it would be at the hands of another MMO, perhaps a Star Wars MMORPG. If Star Wars is good, but Star Wars will never kill WoW. Uh, Final Fantasy is good, but again, two different games of catering to two very different audiences. If I had to guess at the time, never would I have imagined that World of Warcraft's death would come at the hands of the very company 
They created it. Like a child, Blizzard seemed to nurture this game, its universe and community. So the idea of the company neglecting something that brought to them so much success. Dude, I was actually, uh, this week, uh, me and Rurikon during our podcast, we were actually talking about this. And uh, he, he was asking me if uh, Blizzard had announced the next BlizzCon. And I, I sort of off the cuff just remarked that I think Blizzard is moving towards a world where BlizzCon no longer exists. And uh, the reason I think that that's what Blizzard is doing, the origins of BlizzCon was really a, a chance for the developers to meet the players that they were serving. It's, it's to get that connection with the player base. I don't think the new developers, the current World of Warcraft developers, gives a fuck about that connection with their player base. Uh, like, and without that, World of Warcraft just isn't as special anymore. Uh, it was part of the, I think, allure was always that you knew that the developers cared and you knew that the developers were as big a gamer as you were. Seemed far-fetched and ridiculous. And yet here we are, facing the reality that World of Warcraft might just be at its end. Dragonflight is on the horizon for launch this year, according to the recent announcements. Turns out the video I made recently on the release date potentially being leaked was wrong, so don't crucify me in the comment section over that. And we also have Wrath of the Lich King releasing soon, which many classic players have said will be their final expansion. Let's be honest, mm -hmm. not too many people care about World of Warcraft past the death of everybody's favorite Warcraft 3 character, Arthas Menethil, the yep. Lich King. So as you can see, we're in a little bit of a situation here. Shadowlands was a terrible expansion that drove away so many from World of Warcraft to games like Final Fantasy, Elder Scrolls Online, Star Wars The Old Republic, and other games. And if Dragonflight isn't a decent expansion full of fun and flavor to draw back in that lost population and rehook them to the adventures of Azeroth, then World of Warcraft retail is going to officially be sunk. Now sure, there's still gonna be people that are gonna play it, but it will be nowhere near what it used to be in the past or even nowhere near where it was over the past few years in terms of population. Legion will have been retail wow's last big boom. I think a while back I made a video talking about Asmongold and Asmongold said that he thinks WoW can survive a, a, a few more bad expansions, but I agree with Nixium far more. I, I think if 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 Dragonflight sucks as well, on and not even I think here's the dangerous bit of this. Dragonflight doesn't even have to be as bad as Shadowlands. If Dragonflight isn't perfect, there isn't absolutely spectacular. I, I can see a lot of players just never coming back, never even trying it again, because I do think that a lot of people are going to come back for Dragonflight. Because a lot of people want World of Warcraft to be good. But after, if you burn players three times in a row with just a bad expansion, I, I don't think those players are coming back anytime soon. Now, for what it's worth, I do think Dragonflight could be a good expansion. Maybe. It has a relatively simple down-to-earth and grounded story about True. going to a mysterious dragon island to fight classic World of Warcraft enemies we know and love centaur make an appearance that bad? you see the tuscar from wrath of the lich king and of course we're probably going to be killing a lot of evil dragons i would expect the story seems simple one of exploration adventure yep. and dragon riding and slaying new doesn't yep. love a good story about going to kill a dragon anyone here a fan of the hobbit by chance can't wait for amazon to ruin lord of the rings <laughs> it's gonna be great <laughs> blizzard seems to be focusing on what works with dragonflight a simple storyline Classic fantasy. Yeah. No real major changes or game-breaking ideas like Garrison. I like everything he's saying so have, far. They've stolen from other games like Guild Wars 2, aka Dragon Flying. And as we all know, Blizzard is at their best when they are stealing ideas from other companies. True, Isn't that dude. Like Games Workshop, Team Fortress 2, True. and you guys get the idea. But guys, Dragonflight is gonna have a lot to salvage. And let's be real. Shadowlands storytelling was complete ass, boring, and forgettable. And so Dragonflight needs to deliver something epic. Shadowlands storytelling suffered from one major mistake. Literally just one. Zuval. If Zuval was replaced with literally any other character, uh, any existing character, it would have worked. People would have enjoyed it far more. The issue with Shadowlands was they chose 
a main bad guy that also happened to be the one person no one gave a fuck about at all ever during the expansion. Like, no one cared whether this guy lived or died. So, by the time we were sent to actually go kill the guy, most people were still, were still trying to figure out what the fuck he said in his first cinematic. Because he kept whispering. Uh, he never said anything, he just whispered shit. Um, so that's really the only problem with, with, with Shadowlands, was that they had a weak, very weak antagonist, and uh, the protagonists couldn't really carry it, because the antagonist was just that bad. So, yeah, uh, but in terms of storytelling, I, I wouldn't say that it was the worst, it was fine. There were actually some good parts of Shadowlands. It was just the overall, like, scope of it just fell apart. Epic and memorable. Where Shadowlands had repetitive and dull features like Torghast, Dragonflight's content will need to be engaging and worth boasting over. And lastly, where Shadowlands added little in terms of creativity to World of Warcraft, Dragonflight's patch cycle will need to add more and more and more to the game to really entice players to keep playing, True. committing to the expansion, and having fun. And now we have Wrath of the Lich King on the other hand, and that's a whole other story. Obviously, Wrath is considered World of Warcraft in its prime by yep. many people across the globe. Including me. So it's only natural we're gonna see a boom in Classic WoW's population size once the Wrath servers go live. Veteran players will return, committed Classic players will jump ship from TBC, people who never played Wrath will check it out, Overall, the release should be successful. Death Knights, Northrend, the list. I don't know King. if I'm gonna There's play. A lot to look forward to. Classic fans are even getting a treat of Blizzard listening to the feedback over the past few years, deciding to keep LFD out of Wrath of the Lich King. Didn't they just recently say that that's not happening? I'm pretty sure they just very recently said that that was a mistake and that they are actually putting LFD into it. Just make sure. Oh no, I think it was this. I think that's what I read. It's the Quest Alper. Never mind. It's the Quest Alper. People thought that the game Quest Alper was going to be removed for Wrath of the Lich King and then Blizzard just announced that no, no, never mind. It is actually going to be there. They, they just made a mistake despite its introduction into the game during this time. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. No more LFG spam. Naxxramas is apparently getting buffed. We are going to see an yeah. entirely new Wrath of the Lich King that is sure to win the hearts of many players worldwide, at least hopefully. But what happens next? Will Classic WoW just die after Wrath? Well, in my recent video, Classic Plus could be the future of World of Warcraft, I went over exactly what I feel and what many people feel needs to be done in order to keep the Classic population alive and healthy after Wrath's release, and hopefully it's success. If you'd like to check out that video, you can just click right up here. Because judging by all the positive praise that that video received, I think you're going to enjoy it. At least, I think you'll enjoy what I and so many of us have suggested in regards to a future Classic Plus experience. So in conclusion, if Dragonflight fails to make an impact on the souls of potential World of Warcraft players worldwide, Retail WoW is over. No king rules forever, and WoW will officially just slowly trickle down into oblivion. Maybe the expansion That's a sad, mo that's a sad thing to game, think about. If Dragonflight goes down as a terrible expansion, I, I, if the expansion fails, I think what funding will go into the next expansion, especially after Shadowlands, I don't think the, the funding is going to be there for another big expansion after Dragonflight, but I don't know. And there's Wrath of the Lich King. Uh, yeah, sure, Wrath will probably be a big success for classic World of Warcraft. I personally... Community. But what happens next? I don't think if the next expansion fails, I don't agree that the funding for the... Uh, if Dragonflight fails, I don't agree that the funding for World of Warcraft is going away. I think if Wrath of the Lich King fails... Uh, not if Wrath. If Dragonflight fails... Uh, there's probably going to be massive shakeups, so I believe that's when we're going to find out that Ian Azicostas have been sacked. Uh, a lot of the other developers are going to move ship or be fired uh, from Blizzard Entertainment. They're going to do a lot of moving around and get new people in, but I think it's pretty certain at this point. If, micro if Activision Blizzard decided to can World of Warcraft, Microsoft will be very angry. Microsoft wants WoW. WoW is a goldmine of just potential future earnings. 
Microsoft is not going to be okay with just canceling it. So I think what we'll see then is Microsoft sort of doubling down and pouring even more money into the project to try and fix it, to try and get it to where it's supposed to be uh, as far as, you know, Microsoft might consider it to be. Um, but I don't think, I do not believe that it's going to take basically a meltdown to the point of maybe 100 to 200,000 players before I think Microsoft and Activision Blizzard is going to start considering moving money away from the project and into other projects instead. Because it is still a fairly pro uh, profitable game. There's still a lot of money being made here. Uh, what the fuck are they doing releasing them so close? How is uh, LLK going to compete with new expansion? Just dumb as fuck. Uh, LLK is probably going to kill the, the new expansion. I think there is a lot more hype for Wrath of the Lich King than, than what there is uh, for Dragonflight. Next. Most of us don't really want to play Cataclysm or Warlords of Draenor, Battle for Azeroth and all that stuff. So it's either keep the expansions coming out or commit maybe to the funding and the idea of making a completely overhauled Classic Plus experience, giving to us updated new feature filled classic stuff that will blow the minds of even those of us who have played through Classic multiple times. I mean, what else are they gonna do? Either way, all I'm really trying to say is this, guys. This is perhaps the last breath of world. Uh, Machendo, not a hard disagree, but let's say a slight disagree on your statement there. So a narrative director has nothing to do with the physical writing of the story. And yes, the, the story for Dragonflight may actually be complete already, but a narrative director doesn't need as much time in order to get the story straight. All the narrative director has to do is make sure that the story makes sense. So move the stories around to make sure that the story makes sense and that the story is told in the best possible way. So I don't I, I think a narrative director could even save the story of Dragonflight in the limited amount of time that they have. They're obviously gonna have a much bigger impact on uh, the next expansion of the Dragonflight, but they can absolutely have some impact on Dragonflight itself. Um, so yeah, I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be too worried about that just yet. Let's wait and see just how much of it, because usually, uh, the patches on set in stone, like the base game is done and the base story, you know, going into it is done, but the patches are still working. They're still working on the patches. So a narrative director will have control over what is shown in the patches, where the patches are going and stuff like that. So I'm pretty sure this, the, the new narrative director will have some, uh, say over the future of world of warcraft world of warcraft everything hinges on whether or not dragonflight delivers and what happens after wrath of the lich king i never thought laying in my bed all those years ago that this moment would come here it is i can't even make a proper prediction on what is to come <laughs> i can only hope that maybe just maybe my favorite game still has a few surprises left in store for us what makes predictions hard is the cult following that World of Warcraft, and I don't mean cult here in sort of a bad thing. It's just World of Warcraft is sort of a cult classic. Uh, and that makes it hard to predict. Because if World of Warcraft was any other game, it would be dead by now. If any other game pulled the stunts that Blizzard have pulled with WoW, it would already be dead. Like, it would already not like be a thing anymore. The only reason Blizzard so far have been able to get away with this is because so many people will effectively die alongside the game. Right? So many people believe World of Warcraft is going to be the game that they're going to grow old with that it's going to take a lot to finally lose those players. And so it does have a little bit more wiggle room, which is why predicting its end is going to be near impossible because you're effectively going to not predict when the game dies. You have to predict at what point does the cult realize that they're no longer having fun. Prizes that will ignite the same wonder in me today the game did all those years ago when I first was adventuring Azeroth, Outland, and Northrend, making a name for myself in this epic fantasy universe I grew to love. Guys, Thank you for watching the video. Please give it a like, leave a comment on what you think the future of World of Warcraft might look like, and I will see you all with my next video. Dude, I, I really, really want World of Warcraft to succeed.
Like, just, it, it has to be better. Like, it just needs to be good again. I miss playing it, man. Like, I seriously miss playing WoW. I, I miss just having, like, the the opportunity to just log in and do some crazy shit in, in World of Warcraft. So I'm I'm really hoping that this, uh, that Dragonflight brings me back and actually brings me joy in playing. And if it doesn't bring me joy in playing, hopefully the story is good enough that I can still enjoy the story at least. Um, can't you do that in FF? Of course I can, but more is always better, Seven Raven. Why would I want to limit myself to one game if I could play two? Because I get very different things from FF and WoW. I wish I died before my fond memories of WoW rotted into what it is now. <laughs> A variety spice life. Exactly. Some days I'm really in the mood to play FF14. Other days I'm really in the mood to play something else. So if both games, WoW and FF14, is good, it means that if I'm in the mood for FF14, I play that. If I'm in the mood for WoW, I play that. Uh, if WoW is bad, it means that in the, on the days that I'm not in the mood for FF14, I'm playing nothing because, well, there's nothing to fucking play.